Uh, well, we pray then, and 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 we we keep going to uh, our study today. I'm I'm going to ask uh, Pastor Lou. Uh, will you say let's let's have at least uh, three prayers? Pastor Lou, will you will you do one of them? Um, uh, Barbara, do you mind uh, uh, doing one of the prayers? Okay. And then uh, Pastor Lou, Barbara, and how about Jack? Jack, can you have the third prayer? Looks like he might have stepped away. His picture oh, is gone. But then, uh, Carol, do the prayer. Okay. <laughs> okay. Father in heaven, we, we are so grateful. We thank you that we are able to share our blessings and points of thanksgiving and praise to you this evening. Amen. We also know, Father, that you understand our needs. You understand the conditions that the world is in tonight. Father, we know that the people in Ukraine are very, very frightened, scared, uncertain about the future. Lord, we think of the Christians that live in that country. We think of the Adventist Christians as well. Father, you know how difficult this is for them, keeping the Sabbath perhaps because of the conditions there. Um, the fear that runs through the minds and hearts of people, especially people with young children. So Father, we ask that you will please remember the Christians there in that country, remember the entire country, mm -hmm. but specifically the Christians, Lord, as they pray, in my mind, I still see a group of Christians a few days ago. They showed on TV. They went to kind of an open square. And they knelt and they prayed. And that was carried throughout many channels. So we know that, Lord, the people over, over there are crying out to you and asking you for, for your protection, for your blessings and your guidance. So we pray for them. We pray for Putin, Lord. We know we don't know exactly what's going on in his mind, but we know that he is not. He is not well. Obviously, he's not well spiritually. So we ask, Lord, that you will please be with him, that he will not do anything irrational. Mm -hmm. And we think of uh, the requests that were made here this evening. Again, you know, each one that was presented to you. Uh, I think of Shirley's request. And I ask, Father, that you remember the, the needs in that prayer request. And the other request that we mentioned, we think of our own church. We ask that you will please bless our church. You know the needs within our church, those that are spiritually hungering for something. We ask that you will remember them as they come to you for that. So bless us this evening as we open your word. Give us thy spirit that we will understand and that we will be blessed this evening in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Father in heaven, we're so thankful that we can come to you in prayer. We know that you've said that you will always be there. You'll hear us whenever we do call out to you. We're thankful for this group of fellow brothers and sisters that can study the Bible. Pray that you'll open our minds and so that we're able to understand and understand what we're studying. We think of the prayer requests that were voiced tonight. Shirley's brother-in-law, Astrid with her learning something new, all the um, prayer requests in the, in the um, list that came out today. Mm -hmm. And there again, we, we do pray for our brothers and sisters in the Ukraine. We pray that you, we know that you know what you're doing and that you are all in, in control. We yes. thank you for hearing us and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, I thank you so much for this group of people that have come together to worship you tonight. We pray for the Holy Spirit to come into our homes and, and, and uh, open our hearts to listen to the Holy Spirit, that uh, we may learn something new tonight, learn something that we need just for today. We pray for the various 
um, requests that have been mentioned. And we know that you know each one mm -hmm. and those that have not even been mentioned. Yes. We pray that we will have a good study tonight and be blessed. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Wonderful. Can I say one more thing about Ukraine? Yes, uh, sir. There's a, I got an email from ASI. There's uh, Adventist ministries that are in Ukraine as well as other countries over there, and they're helping the refugees and whatnot. And they emailed that there's a way to donate to them. Um, Outpost Centers International, I think, is the um, umbrella that they're under. But um, they did provide a way to donate to them if we want to. So just wanted to share that. Mm -hmm. Great. That's that's wonderful. Uh, we, we need to, we should take a look of it, definitely. All right. Well, let's get, let's get into uh, the matter for today, into our study today. Um, and, and today, the, the, the verses that we are going through on Revelations are um, actually one of my favorite verses, and it's uh, the message, the first message of, uh, of the uh, three angels, the, the message of the first angel, which is uh, Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 and 7. Um, and this is a, a, a great uh, way to start tonight, or a great way to go today, because uh, there are many things we can learn in these two short verses. There are many, many objective lessons, many practical lessons, and also um, there are that we need to know, we need to understand regarding these verses that are going to build up our spiritual lives. So, um, and I, I want to start by, let's start by reading the verses. Uh, can, can somebody read, please read uh, uh, those verses in uh, Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 and 7, please? Are you going to be able to put saw... it <laughs> And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Amen. Now, uh, as, as we're reading these verses, something that we have mentioned, and I know that I mentioned it la last time that I was uh, uh, here uh, doing this study, is that uh, the, the book of Revelations is, uh, is full of quotations from the Old Testament, right? And from all the parts of the scripture. And as we go to these verses, we immediately are able to identify some of those quotations and some of those uh, 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 parts of the Bible that were taken from straight from the Old Testament over here. And it's important for us to be able to identify those uh, portions of the Bible of, of the Old Testament that were transferred or were qu quoted here because that will help us to get a better picture. But before we get there, we, we, we can see the verse, verse 6 starts saying that I saw another angel. And I think that uh, the first thing that we need to understand is what, an, what is an angel in, in this moment, in this case, uh, on the Bible, in Revelations? What is, what, are we talking about a heavenly being here? Are we talking about something, or are we talking about something different? Definitely a messenger of messenger. some sort. Mm -hmm. Okay, definitely a messenger of some sort. As a matter of fact, the word angel, when you when when we translate it from the Greek to to English, um, it, 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 what it means is a messenger. It's a messenger. Now we need to to try to figure out: is this a messenger um, uh, coming out of heaven? Is this a messenger um, of a divine uh, um, characteristics, or what type of messenger are we talking here? Any, any ideas? I would think I, it would be a heavenly messenger because it does deal with, with things that uh, prophecy. Mm -hmm. Heavenly messenger because it deals with things of prophecy, okay. I'm okay. wondering if an actual angel that is oversees the work that is uh, delegated to humans. 
in in actual injured the overseas the message and the work that is delegated to human okay any other take i think messengers uh, in this context here is actually referring to uh christians mm -hmm. who have been filled with the spirit of the lord who understand the last day message that god has given to his church and they are going out to proclaim this message to the world. Mm. And as a matter of fact, Pastor Lou, when, when we go and we read what Sister White says about the, the message of the first angel, she talks about the message of the three angels, of course, but uh, in, in specifically talking about the message of the first angel, she says what happened when the message of this, the first angel was starting to be uh, uh, spread around the world. And, and she says that how, she describes how many people uh, left their job left their careers, left everything to go and preach the, this gospel, to preach this message. So there, um, um, and it, it is interesting that it says that he saw another angel, another messenger. When we're talking about an angel here, we're talking about a messenger. Actually, throughout the Bible, every time we talk about an angel, we're talking about a messenger. In this case, a messenger from God. Now, he says that he was flying in the midst of heaven what do you think that it means that he was flying in the midst of heaven maybe it's a it's heavenly a heavenly it's, message it's going rapidly rapidly mm -hmm. mm. It's a, that's exactly what it means it's, it's a heavenly message it's a message that, is, that comes from god that was spread in mm -hmm. a very fast fashion it was very quick it was it was brought out quickly now that's that's exactly what happened right uh, uh before of the um um great disappointment right mm -hmm. the message and we're going to keep going on this that the, the the message of the second coming of christ was spread rather quickly everybody heard that message and mm -hmm. and embraced the message it was accepted it went quick rapidly so I said that he had uh, uh, that he was going, he was quick, and he was having the everlasting gospel. Mm -hmm. Now let me ask you: Have you have you heard of have we seen in gospel this expression ever before in the Bible? Which expression is that? Lasting gospel. Lasting gospel. Oh. No. I don't know. Oh. Yeah, I might be wrong, but I believe that the only place or, or the first place in which this uh, expression, the everlasting, this combination of words, the everlasting gospel, appears in the Bible is here. I, I'm almost certain that this is the case. I could be wrong, but I, I'm, I've been searching for everywhere else and I haven't found it. The everlasting gospel. Now, the question that I, that I will ask, is this everlasting gospel any different than the gospel? And if it's so, what is the difference? If it's the everlasting gospel, it's got to be the gospel that was preached that's everlasting all the way back to the Old Testament. What was the gospel that was preached? Oh. In those days, the gospel was the coming of the Messiah, the first coming of the Messiah. They preached the great gospel of Jesus coming soon. And of course, our gospel is mm. the coming of the second, second advent. Okay. So when we talk about the everlasting gospel, are we talking about anything new here? It's a no. new gospel that no. John is introducing? No. no. I don't think so. Okay, Does so the term everlasting kind of refer to the fact that it's still valid? It hasn't um, become obsolete since... Um, days of christ and that is still valid and continue to be valid or before christ like uh lou said from well, from okay. the beginning okay. okay well something that is everlasting i think that pastor lou uh hit it hit the nail on the head something that is everlasting is something that always been there mm. right it's all it's something that has no beginning it's something that has no end mm -hmm. always okay. been there yeah. 
everlasting. It's eternal. It's eternal. In, 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 as, as a matter of fact, in, in uh, the, the, the Bible, the, 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 the Spanish translations will translate instead of everlasting. Well, it's the same word technically. It, it translates eternal, eternal, eternal. So it's eternal. It's, it's the same gospel. When, when John is talking about the e eternal gospel, the everlasting gospel, he's not bringing something new. He just, he just added a description to, the, to the, the gospel itself. The gospel is the same. It's not changing. It is the same. And it's, it's, uh, um, Pastor um, Shirley, I, oh, Mac, Mac is telling me that Shirley probably has a question. Shirley, do you have a question or, or comment? I, I have a both. <laughs> okay, um, right. I just wonder, um, in verse 7, it's saying that um, the angel was crying out with a loud voice to fear God, give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. It, 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 there's so much urgency in verse 7, more urgency to me than before, because if we should look around and see what's going on, since we've had the COVID situation, how accelerated the gospel has been in, in, in various parts of the world through Zoom, through different platforms. And we would say before that, oh, I don't know how these people will hear the gospel, you know, with just two of us going or with a group or whatever. But now, we have no excuse, almost no excuse, to say that we haven't heard the gospel in, in different parts of the world. Man. You know, that, that group that's doing The Chosen says that that's their aim, mm -hmm. it, is to get the, the gospel all over the world through media. The media. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, now if... if if this is a everlasting gospel, is this, what is the difference between uh, the gospel that Paul preached versus the gospel that John is bringing here in Revelations? If there, is there any difference or is it the same? Or is it the same? I think it's the same, maybe emphasizing part of it. Mm -hmm. the, the same in part of it okay yeah any any other comments any other re uh, answer response to that you know it's interesting uh when we think of the gospel in the new testament especially um we think of salvation of course salvation by grace mm -hmm. gospel is something free mm -hmm. Gospel is the good news, as we know. That's what the word means, good news. Mm -hmm. The good news of Jesus Christ. And, you know, I'm just wondering, in the Old Testament, uh, when I'm thinking of the passage, I believe, is, in, is it in Genesis, where it speaks about, Paul, uh, excuse me, Abraham? The gospel was given to Abraham, and I'm trying to remember where that passage is, but I, it doesn't come to my mind just now. But... Uh, I wonder how they interpreted the gospel in terms of, I'm not sure what the word gospel means in the Hebrew. Maybe one of you pastors might know what, what the word gospel means in the Hebrew, but in the Greek, it actually means good news, right? Mm -hmm. And the gospel is good news, mm -hmm. isn't it? Wonderful news, the best news ever. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm just wondering uh, how some of those Old Testament people who were so uh, engraved in the whole concept of works. Mm -hmm. Maybe they were not. Maybe they were not. Maybe that's works or something that came. Like, I don't know. But uh, we know that Paul spoke against that. Mm -hmm. he? Mm -hmm. The whole issue of works. Yeah. So, what is what is that gospel? Uh, let's let's go to First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verses, um, verse one. From verse one. I, I'm going to read it myself this time. It says there, moreover, moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you receive and in which you stand, by which you also are saved, if you hold fast 
that word which I preach to you, unless you believe in vain. For I deliver to you first of all that which I also receive, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Look what is Paul's gospel. Christ died uh, uh, for us, for our sins according to the scripture, and that he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scripture, and that he was seen by Cephas, then by the twelve. After that, he was seen by over 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain to the present, but some have fallen asleep. After that, he has seen, he was seen by James, then by the apostles, then the last of all, he was seen by me also as by one born out of due time. Now, we can, we can see here, what was Paul's gospel? What was the first part of, Paul, of Paul's gospel specifically? That Jesus died for our sins, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Well, what was happening when Jesus died on the cross? What was taking place? What took place when Jesus died on the cross? He paid the penalty for us. He, he, he died for us. He paid the penalty. Yeah. Veil was torn. Relationship with God He's restored. Broken. Relationship oh, yeah. with God restored. But what was happening? In, try to think right now. Try to think in legal terms, in, in legalistic. The sacrificial part. What was happening the there? Was ending. The, when the, the finished. The uh, anti sacrifice had been had happened. Okay. Um, the lamb ran away. They were bringing a, a lamb, and it ran away. Yeah, you still not give me the word that I'm looking for. Anti What was the act of sacrificing the lamb? The act of sacrificing the lamb. The offering. Wow. Passover. Passover. And the Passover. Atonement. Uh, Atonement. Atonement. Uh huh. Uh huh. It's pretty simple. When Jesus died on the cross, judgment was being executed. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. oh, yes. We were right? getting there. <laughs> you were getting there. You were getting there, as a matter of fact. When Jesus died on the cross, God's judgment was being executed. In this case, to save us, but somehow judgment has to be, the, the, the sentence has to be fulfilled. Jesus did it. Now, the preaching of the everlasting gospel is fear God. To preach first, the everlasting gospel is to be preached. To everyone, right? to every tribe, uh, 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 nation, and people, right? That as as Matthew chapter twenty four verse fourteen says. Now, the the message is fear God and give Him, give to Him the glory, glory. for the hour of His judgment has come. Remember, in this case, when you died on the cross, God, the gospel that Paul preached was the gospel of the judgment of God being executed on Jesus. For our salvation. Will you agree with me on that? Mm -hmm. Yes. You think you can agree? I, I, I hope that you do. Um, I, um, because if you don't, you will be wrong. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the judgments of what was been executed. Now, here, of course, the, and then, then the message of the first angel is the judgment, the hour of the judgment has come. Has come. Which judgment are we talking here? Are we talking about the atonement? Are we talking about the judgment on the cross? Are we talking about other judge, another judgment? Another time? What are we talking about here? Is it the same message? It's a judgment of sin. For, a judgment for sin. Mm -hmm. So is any different than the, the, the judgment that happened on the cross? It's not the investigative judgment in um, verse seven. Yeah, it's it's the investigative judgment. I, I I agree with you. There's any difference than the judgment that happened on the cross? Isn't the judgment the investigative judgment? Um, well, I guess I've heard people say that it's actually God being judged to see if he's, um, or maybe that happens after the millennium. 
um, to me, he's judging our response to what Christ did. Mm. It's an ex maybe that sounds like an extension of the judgment on the cross, right? Yes. So, saying uh, with loud voice, fear God and give him glory for the hour of his judgment has come. The first message, the message of the first angel was started to be preached. As a matter of fact, in what time? Right after 1844. Right? Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Yes. After the appointment, October 22nd, 1844, when finally it was understood that the prophecy of Daniel chapter 8, verse 14, was not making reference to the purification of the earth, but it was making reference about the purification of the heavenly sanctuary, which it means the beginning of the investigative um, uh, judgment. Mm -hmm. Now, Pastor, I want to ask. Uh, uh, just, go ahead. Um, so I read. Um, it's just interesting um, that God allowed them to misunderstand that because it wouldn't have spread so quickly if if they if it had just been that they knew that it was the heavenly sanctuary as opposed to the earth that's what made it spread so quickly because oh jesus is coming back to earth and so that made it spread more quickly in god's mm. presence. so god, that's that's perspective uh -huh. go, go ahead yeah he makes the best out of you know i mean he he uses our mistakes or whatever to you know get the information he out there Amen. He, he, he does. So he does use, use our mistakes so we can, for, for his honor and glory, if we, if we, are, uh, if we allow him to use us. So this, this judgment, this message, this first message of the third, uh, of the, the first message, the first angel message is, uh, um, it started basically to be preached right after 1844. Now, it's not a new gospel. It's not a different gospel. It's eternal gospel. Therefore, it's been there forever. Now, it says, fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come. What does it mean to fear God and give him glory? Doesn't mean to be afraid of him. Doesn't mean to definitely doesn't mean to be afraid of him. Mm -mm. I would say it, in part it means to reverence him and to live a life of um, that is like his character, revealing his character. Mm. I, I think the next verse uh, or the next phrase is the most important because it says and worship him. I think this whole angel's message is about who we're going to worship. worship. And it's mm -hmm. all tied and connected together. Um, so the hour of his judgment, which we as Adventists believe was the investigative judgment that began, like you said, but the, the critical thing is at the, at the end, who are, who are we going to be willing to, to worship? Who's going to be the main focus of mm -hmm. our lives? Mm -hmm. That's the way I've always understood it. Okay. The, the, the second part, definitely, the next verse is definitely very important. Just it, it, it glues everything together pretty much. Joel? Yes. It's interesting the, the phrasing. There's three, there's like three parts to what he says um, mm -hmm. fear God, give glory to God, worship God. So fear, mm -hmm. give glory, and worship, right? There, it's like a threefold command. Connect. Um, I don't know. I don't know that I think is that any of these are, are necessarily ranking in importance as much with the context of worship and revelation. And we, I think, in in our predilection is to go there for sure. But showing respect to God, giving glory to Him, I think they go together. Because when what do we see in Revelation thirteen is how God's name is being so incredibly uglified was the word we used, right? Mm -hmm. When we respect him, when we're shining a light, giving glory to him, we're shining a light on who he really is. 
you know, you look at the first part of Revelation 14 and they, they're standing with the lamb. There's no deceit in their mouth. So their glory is on who he really is. Mm. And people worship who he really is, not who he's presented to be by the characters in Revelation 13 in particular. Mm. Amen. So is the, that is the, the threefold message of the first angel. The, 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 the message of the first angel has three, three parts that are very important in, in, in this uh, verse. Fear God. Recognize who he is. Respect him and, and give him glory. Recognize who he, am, he is. And worship him. Now, can, and this is important. Uh, um, although, Pastor, you said that the order is not uh, it's not that important, I I will beg to disagree on you with you on the on this. I'm sorry, <laughs> um, because I can't give glory to God if I'm not able to respect Him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the first step for me to be able to give glory to God is to fear Him, to respect Him. Once I respect him because I'm recognizing who he is, then I can give him the glory. And once I'm giving him the glory, then I'm ready to worship him. Now, this point is important because the conflict throughout the Bible between God and Satan is being worshipped. Mm -hmm. The controversy between evil and good is being worshipped. Who to whom to worship, when to worship, how to worship. Worship is always being in the center of the storm. And, uh, um, and it's been so much in the center of the storm that even though sometimes there are people that has a, they have different uh, tastes, uh, there are people that may have different tastes on, on worship, but not necessarily wrong, either one. Uh, even, even having the right perspective of worship and doing worship right, only just using a different different style or whatever um even that caused controversy and 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 satan uses that to to uh create uh, and stir up the pot so fear god give him glory and then the reason uh, can you see there is a command fear god and give him glory for the hour and then give you a reason the hour of his judgment has come. Now, I'm going to tell you something that I, I grew up with. I grew up tormented. And it was not until actually I was an adult that I got to understand this. But I grew up tormented because I grew up being told, you have to be careful. You never know when your name is going to be uh, being looked at during the, the investigative uh, judgment in heaven. And when you're, once your name pass over there, if you, uh, did you ever hear that? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know what effect that had on you, but I can tell you that I, I had long nights, lo long nights without, without being able to sleep. And somehow got me to pray a little bit more to ask God, please, Lord, don't, don't, especially when I did something that I, that, that I thought it was very wrong. Uh, uh, please, Lord, don't let that, you know, that, uh, please, Lord, my name, please, Lord, my name didn't pass through the, the, uh, your, your, uh, to you this night, right? Please, Lord, no, no, please, Lord, don't let that to happen. I'm really sorry that happened to you. <laughs> I didn't have that <laughs> growing up because I didn't grow up in Adventist, but my kids did a little bit. They had that too. That Happened. I was told that a lot of times. I was told that by um, by people in church. I was told that by my older siblings. I was told that by by um, by my grandma. I was told that by my pastors. I was told that by a lot of people. And um, it was not good. So until I understood that this judgment actually is being taken care of already, I don't have to be concerned. Because this judgment is the same judgment that Jesus experienced and extends, experienced on the cross and extends over to me. Jesus already paid for that judgment. Now, I'm not saying that I need to, that I should be living my life doing whatever, right? But, but I have to understand that at the end of the day, there is nothing I can do to save myself. There is nothing I can do to be lost. 
all I have to do is to trust Jesus and he will take care of my needs and he will be my intercessor. He will get between me and the father and show the father his righteousness. So I have not to fear. I don't need to fear. So fear God and give him glory for the hour of his judgment has come. Now, have you heard, um, actually, before I go there, uh, uh, then we go to verse 7. And worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. Um, what do you think, where, where, where have you heard those words before? From where, from where is John quoting or at least making reference to what is John making reference there? Is it or, Isaiah, or like Isaiah 55, where it says, oh, everyone that thirsts come to the water, that kind of thing? Well, that could be, that could be, yeah, that's actually, that's a, good, a very good guess. That's actually very good. Very one. A good one. I think, I think he is, in essence, tying back to the creation. Of, He's, of, going, of, He's going all the way back to creation. Exodus. Okay. Well, it's the fourth commandment. Genesis, I mean. Genesis. And, and, and the, the, somebody, Genesis, yeah, the creation, the, definitely he's going back to the creation. And uh, somebody else says? The fourth commandment. Fourth commandment, yeah. Fourth, the fourth commandment. When you go to the fourth commandment in Exodus, I think that that was the, 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 the mix that uh, Pastor Lou had. He kind of mixed Genesis with Exodus and uh, also too. But uh, um, that's the, the fourth commandment. He created, right? He created earth, the sea, and the, spring, the, the springs of water. He is the creator. Now, we find something very interesting here. Here, we see God having ownership over us in two different ways in these verses. Number one, God has ownership over us because he's the judge. I like to say the word that we like the most because he's our redeemer. Remember, this judgment is an extension of the judgment executed on the cross when Jesus died, right? Jesus, God, is owns us because he redeemed us. But also, God owns us because he is our savior. Now, if you go to the Deuteronomy chapter 5, in, we look at the Ten Commandments, and we look specifically to the Fourth Commandment, the Sabbath Commandment, we figure that this is a, somehow, it, 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 it refers or somehow is connected to the Sabbath God, in Exodus chapter, uh, chapter 20, verses 8 through 11, he says we should keep the Sabbath. Why? Because he's our creator. He is the creator. And Deuteronomy says that we should keep the Sabbath because he is our redeemer. Mm. So now it makes sense. It makes sense to me. Now if we look on the context of chapter 14. Let's see what verse 14, uh, chapter verse, verse 1 says. Verse 1 uh, and yeah, verse 1. Then I looked, and behold, a lamp standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven, like the voice of many waters, and like the voice of loud thunder. And I heard the sound of the harpists playing their harps. They sang as it were a new song before the throne, before the four living creatures. And the elders, and no one could learn that song except the 144,000 who were redeemed from the earth. I'm not going to get into that because I know that was studied probably in pre previous weeks. You, you have to talk about that. But the 144,000, what it says, that they have what they, they, they had in, in their foreheads? God's See? name. His name. The name also is being called in other parts of, of Revelations and the Bible. They they had the seal. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
the name, I think the name and, and also the seal, but the, the name specifically on the forehead, I think it, it also represents the very character of God. Mm -hmm. these, uh, these individuals have been transformed so that they, they, have, uh, they have now the character of God himself. Uh, you know, character is something that, uh, as we know, we, as Adventists especially, we've been told that that's the area that uh, our Lord wants to work with us the most is in our character. And of course, the glory of God is also the very character of God. Amen. Amen. So let's let's think about this uh, a little deeper. Let's go to Exodus chapter 8. Somebody please read Exodus 20, 8 to 11. And we have two minutes to conclude. So remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it, you shall do no work, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Okay. In, in the times, in the times, in the biblical times, the kings had a seal, right? And it was, it was in a ring, had a seal. And that seal, and actually still today, uh, the, uh, the monarchies that have the seal, those seals have some specific things. Number one, it has the name of the monarch with the name of the honor. It has the title of the honor and he has the territory the territory that that yeah. person controls those three things right right does the does 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 the sabbath mention or does the sabbath have those qualities yeah yes yes it says the name the lord the lord god right uh-huh that's the name it says his domain Heaven and earth. Yeah. And it says his title. Yeah. The creator. Heaven and earth. You see? Okay. Yeah. Now, the message, and I'm pretty sure you have heard this term. I have to, to close here. Pretty sure you have to, this term, the present truth. Yes. Okay. The message of the, the first message of the three angels, of the, the message of the first angel, in this case, it was the present truth that needed to be preached in that time. There were two things that were completely forgotten from, from the theology and religion. And the first thing was God's judgment and God's sanctuary. And, you know, to the point that it was believed that the sanctuary was the earth. And that was a common belief. Everybody believed that at that point. And the Sabbath has had, had been rele relegated, uh, pretty much forgotten. Um, in the present truth, that message that needed to be preached at that time and still needs to be preached was the judgment that had started. And it was also, I was about to start, and it was the Sabbath. Now, not the Sabbath, not the judgment for us to be fearful and concerned about salvation or to make the Sabbath as uh, the what will pro propel us for salvation, but to identify us as his people, as God's people. So as we think, as, as we see these two verses, this, this part, we need to remember that we are called to fear God and to give him glory because he is, the judgment is going on, has begun, and we are to worship him because he is our creator. Listen, I think the message here of this is very simple. It's simplified. I simplify it this way. We should fear God and give him glory, give him honor. Because he's our, he's our judge, and he's a righteous, just, loving, caring, 
God. So, and our advocate on front of that judge is no other but his son. I still wonder how can we be found guilty in that judgment? We are stepping in front of it. Come on. We're stepping in front of the judge, of a judge which, and our advocate, our attorney, is no other but his son. That, by the way, is our attorney that charged us no fees, and he paid what we owe. Mm. Why should we be concerned? All we have to do is to open our yeah, hearts. We have to choose, though, Joe. Yeah. We have to choose, yes. We have to choose to believe and to trust him and give him our lives. Because that's even that's that makes it even even more beautiful, Mac. Because you know, even though he prepared and gave us everything, still he tells us, but you know, I give you the choice. You can you can let it go if you want. Now we know the rest of the story, right? And then he's not only our redeemer, but he's also our creator. I don't think that anybody can love us and be so more concerned than him about our eternal life and our eternal destiny. So if we choose to serve Jesus, if we choose to have Jesus in our heart and to let Jesus guide us, this judgment should be a motive, a reason for us to rejoice. Amen. Amen. All right. So it's good news, not judgment is good news, isn't it? Amen. Not bad news. Amen. Exactly, and that's the point. I, I, I forgot that. That's, that's a that, and, that, and that's so consistent with the belief that the Hebrews and the Jews had about judgment, that it was in their favor, that it was for yeah. them, that God that's was right. for them, not against them. I mean, that's yeah. so critical to remember. We, My grandmother is one of those people, you, Joel, you mentioned. Every night, I remember her prayers. They were almost creepy sometimes. I hate to say it that way, but I don't really have another word for it. It's, it was so, woe is me. Uh, I, I don't know if if I've I'm going to be saved. I don't I don't know if I've been judged in God's favor. And it's it was it was absolutely horrifying to watch. It, I mean, it, it's just so critical of people to understand judgments in your favor, not against you. But Pastor, the reason that, that you know? people are so scared about it is because we base it based on how we did today. It, it, did, I, did I? was I good enough today? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it becomes an a, a, a issue of righteousness by my works yeah. instead of by the faith I have in my, in, in, in my, inter my lawyer. I guess that's the word I was trying to yeah. find. If, if, I, if I choose Jesus as my lawyer, I don't have to worry about all of the no. things that I am going to do or not do today. And we sometimes get hung up on that. And he's not only your lawyer, but he's also your judge. And to me, that's exactly. really good news. Isn't it? He's writing <laughs> my friend. He's writing yeah, his law friend, in yeah. our What? He's writing his law in our hearts. Yeah. So Same. it becomes natural for us to do the things that please him. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. The deck is incredibly stacked in our favor. <laughs> so mm -hmm. let's, let's put Remember, listen, I, I, I'm going to tell you something in a minute, and, and I'm going to conclude. As I'm working in, in, in with hospice patients now, um, it's just a, it's a different, it's a, it's a different concept or a different dynamic, not a different concept, but a different dynamic. And uh, sadly, I have found something very sad. I had had a few Adventists, Seventh Day Adventist patients that I've been, I have taken, I have taken care of them. And it's interesting that almost only, I, I had only one non-Adventist that have told me this. A Christian, and among the Christian, among the, the, those that uh, have professed, are Christ, professed Christians. Um, when, I, when I asked them, do you have peace in your heart? Unfortunately, um, the most people that have told me this answer are Seventh-day Adventists. I don't. I, I, I ask why. And they said, I, I don't know if I have been done the things I should be doing to go to him. Um, it, it was heartbreaking. 
um, it's been heartbreaking to, to hear that, that most of the Seventh-day Adventist Christians that have taken care of in the days that they're close to die, they are afraid of dying because they are not sure that, that they're going to be saved. Mm -hmm. You know, we have, if we chose Jesus, our lawyer, mm -hmm. Jesus is our judge, the father, his father is our judge. And, and you know, we're, we're kind of responsible for that because in, in our mm -hmm. theology for years, we based it on, on do's and don'ts. And, yeah. and that's what kind of drove a lot of young people out because yeah. they figured out I, I can never really be good enough. They, they, we never came to the point where we recognize that salvation is based on our relationship with God day by day. Yeah. And, and that's why when you ask those patients that question, they're trying to remember what did I do or what didn't I, what I, what didn't I do that's mm -hmm. gonna keep me out of heaven, not yeah. who is my friend. Exactly, that's my journey. All right, well, let's, let's go cool conclude with prayer. Mac, will you pray for us? Oh, sure, yeah. It's by our heads. Father, thank you for your blessings. Thank you for reminding us of your goodness and your love and your mercy and for being our judge, our friend, our God, our creator. Sometimes we think that we can do your work, but we have to learn to choose and to come to you and to trust you. Thank you for all that you have done for us and making it, making it possible for us to have, our, have an eternal relationship with you, to live with you forever. Mm -hmm. Forgive us, Lord, where we have tried to do it ourselves. And, and we recognize, Lord, that without you, we are nothing. So please keep our minds focused on having that relationship with you that guarantees our salvation and that we don't have to do anything to earn it. We want to especially pray for those who are on our, our prayer list that we've talked about and we want to especially pray for uh, the people of Ukraine who are experiencing a terrible war. And we pray, Lord, for your intervention that lives can be saved. And we pray that this uh, turmoil can be ended. Now mm -hmm. bless us and keep us each family and members of our church. We pray for our continued, um, the building of our church. And we pray that you'll uh, help that to continue to go well. And we look forward to having an opportunity to worship in that new location. Be with each Amen. family tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, Before we leave, I'd like to say hello to Dorothy Mott. She's one of our church members who's not able to get out. And um, we don't see her on prayer, prayer meeting night often enough. And Dorothy, please feel free to come and meet with us again. It's even if we can't see you, it's good to see your name. We're all sending yes, greetings and prayers for you. Amen. I was just thinking. Yes. Of Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hi, Dorothy. Hi, Dorothy. Dorothy. Hi, Dorothy. We'd like to see you, Dorothy. <laughs> all right. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. God bless.